What's up everybody? Today we have a science video on the cards for today. This one has actually been in the works for quite some time and, and unfortunately I lost a bunch of my data due to a PEBCAC issue. But today we'll be looking at tier two static flak. This is going to be the first video building into kind of the next topic. So it's a little bit of a two part series on how tier two flak actually stacks up against uh, tier three SAMs. So static, static anti-air versus static anti-air of different tiers. And this is, I've thought a good place to start because there are a lot of differences between tier two static flak. But before we get into the meat and potatoes of today's video, I wanted to thank everyone for your support um, and encouragement, honestly. Y'all hitting that like and subscribe button um, on these videos really, really helps me out a lot. I'm a one dude operation that does the testing, writing the scripts, creating the footage, editing the videos, which is probably why my videos look like they're edited by a five-year-old mashing the keyboard, thumbnailing, uploading management, etc. So subscribes and likes help a long way, go a long way to helping recommend this video to other people and allowing me to have uh, more ad revenue that can go towards either upgrading things for the channel or hosting tournaments for y'all. I haven't kind of told y'all where kind of the ad revenue goes for these videos, but uh, to give you a couple of different things, I, all of my ad revenue gets reinvested back into the channel in one way or another. Um, for instance, y'all support has funded my portion of the prize pool for the tournament that I'm currently hosting. It's upgraded my monitor to allow me to uh, upload 2K videos for y'all. Um, then some supporting hardware and some things that I have in the pipe are a new mic as well as adding a webcam and hopefully improving the viewing experience uh, for y'all. And the remainder of my ad revenue actually goes towards supporting other content creators in the FAF community as well. So I actually don't take home any of the ad revenue for myself and while I don't pretend to have not benefited from some of the upgrades y'all have helped with. For instance, upgrading my monitors has been really nice because playing other games in 1440 has been more enjoyable than playing in 1080. I do try to make sure that every upgrade that I do or uh, everything that I reinvest in is going to appreciably increase the viewing quality for each of y'all. So hitting that like and subscribe button, I don't have a Patreon, I don't have a YouTube membership set up uh, just because I don't think I could deliver really anything that would be additional. Uh, for y'all, but hitting that like and subscribe button is the best way that you guys can support me um, and help support the channel as all this money does go back into reinvesting into the channel, tournaments, the Fortune Alliance Forever community, other content creators, etc. So uh, with that, I'll stop shilling for myself. I need to just get that off my chest and kind of give you guys, be a little bit transparent about the kind of where this money is going. I don't know. I feel like I owe it to y'all because y'all have uh, helped me so much uh, from both a motivation standpoint as well as from a feedback standpoint, content suggestion, submitting casts, everything. Um, you are really the lifeblood of this channel. I just feel like I'm kind of a conduit. So with that, let's go ahead and get into the video. All right, so let's talk about what I'm, how I'm doing these tests and what tests I'm going to be performing. So first off, the stats across the board are very similar between the factions. They do change slightly between the factions, which um, by, so for instance, damage per second increases by about 10% between the lowest and the highest. Aeon being the lowest and Seraphim are at the highest. Aeon are down at about 150 damage per second while Seraphim are up at 166. Area of effect also changes with uh, between all of the factions with three area of effect on the lowest end for the Aeon and five on the higher end for the Cybran. There are also differences in range between the factions with the Aeon and UEF sporting 50 range while the Cybran and Seraphim are rocking a max range of 44. So also things that we're going to be keeping in mind. There are also changes to specific turret pitch and this might have an impact, and I'm assuming terminology in the FAF database is the same as with aircraft, but this essentially dictates how much the turret can rotate on a latitudinal uh, axis. And so this can change how quickly a flak artillery can switch between targets, but we'll see how that actually looks in testing. My initial prediction is that the Cybran is going to perform the best because it has the largest AOE and that the Aeon will perform the worst because it has the lowest damage per second and the lowest 
area of effect. So with that, let's get into the first test. Here, we'll be stacking the flak up against a large number of ASFs, 25 to be exact. They are of the Corona variety. I've set them up in a patrol pattern to simulate the ASFs doing kind of tight turns and moving at slightly lower speeds than if they were flying in a straight line. This mimics what an ASF pattern would be during an air fight. You're trying to turn as quickly as you can, get behind your opponent, and air fights, if y'all haven't seen them before, are kind of a circular vortex of ASFs with the other, uh, with both players trying to get in back behind their opponent. So results are on the screen from my spreadsheet. I did five runs with each of the Aeon, with each of the uh, factions. This has the Aeon trailing the other factions by a wide margin in both overall average and run to run variance. Seraphim is the most consistent across the board with the lowest standard deviation between tests and Cybern and UEF are effectively tied for second here. They didn't perform that much worse than the Seraphim in overall average, but run to run variance was far greater. Now, some run to run variance within these tests is to be is unavoidable just because I'm using patrol commands and these are air units which calculate their paths in a more unique fashion than land units. It's hard to it's hard to mimic the exact same path for all the units every single time. But five runs will give us a good idea of how each faction performs. So with that, uh, that is kind of the rundown for the first test. Seraphim leading the pack right now. And I believe that it is due to higher damage per second with a relatively high area of effect as well. So damage, or Seraphim have the highest DPS of any of the factions um, with the second highest area of effect at four. Um, within their particular flak artillery. So let's get into test number two. For the second test, we're more just testing raw firepower against slower moving targets rather than testing how they deal with uh, ASFs. So for this one, we're gonna be sending five broadswords up against four flak. The shields are really only there to make sure that there aren't any casualties on the flak side and that the flak artillery are still able to keep outputting damage. Um, as kind of a sidebar, I thought it was really cool that the broadswords take kind of a similar pattern as the gunships in the movie Olympus Has Fallen. Uh, if you haven't seen it, it's a pretty cool action flick about a terrorist organization that tries to take over the White House. Uh, whenever I saw that the broadswords were taking that kind of uh, approach, I actually flipped it on on my second screen and have been watching it for the last... Where am I at? Uh, 45 minutes or so. So yeah, it's a cool movie. It's kind of a, I mean, it's a cheesy action movie, but if cheesy action movies tickle your fancy, then that's a good one to watch. But here we start to see the range advantage come into play for the UEF as it leads the pack very slightly, striking a good happy medium between range, area of effect, and overall damage per second. The UEF are followed closely by the Cybran, which benefits from the higher area of effect, then the Seraphim benefiting from the higher damage per second, Unsurprisingly, the Aeon is trailing in last uh, once again. So range here is not enough to actually save the Aeon. So the Aeon and the UEF are both the uh, tier two flak that have the highest range at 50, where the Cybern and the Seraphim have 44. So range is not enough here to save the Aeon as they come in a distant fourth, both because of the lowest DPS at 150 and the lowest area of effect at three for their radius. So let's go ahead and conclude this. We'll wrap this up. Like I said, I'm planning on using this data in a part two where we compare flak artillery against SAMs. Um, range played a little bit more of a part than I thought it would in the second test against slower moving and more tanky targets. And I believed that, uh, quite frankly, I believe that area of effect would reign supreme here. And the reason why I believe that is the area of effect, uh, uh, the area of a circle, not the area of effect, the area of a circle is a pretty simple formula that we can calculate with area equals pi radius squared. So with that formula, we can compare overall areas of effect. It's a little bit more dramatic than an AOE of three versus an AOE of five would lead you to believe, because if you're comparing three versus five, you would think that it has an area of effect of 60%. So the Aeon at three would have a 60% of an area of effect of the Cybrant, which have an AOE of five. But if we actually put this into the formula, a radius of three, which is what the Aeon has, means it has an overall area of effect of 28. And these 28 are just kind of arbitrary units that are put together by Supreme Commander. 
Um, but we can pair and contrast that with the radius of five, which is what the Cybran has, and the Cybran has an overall area of 79 in their area of effect, nearly triple that of the Aeon. So not necessarily 60%, we're looking at a 300% nearly increase over that of the Aeon. All the, both of those numbers, 28 and 79, are rounded to the nearest whole number. By, by the way, I know that there are decimal places in there, I just don't want to include them. So contrary to my initial thought, range did play a role in the second use case, and I suspect it did in the first use case as well. I just hadn't scripted that particular part out yet, which is why the UEF and the Cybern were kind of tied for second, even though the Cybern has both higher DPS as well as a larger area of effect than the uh, UEF flag does. But UEF having longer range definitely helps out. So because of how things have played out in the various tests, you have to declare the UEF the winner of this particular contest after scoring second in the first test and first in the second test. And if that's not confusing, I don't know what will be. It's blend of area of effect, damage, and range advantage seems to be the silver bullet here. In seconds, I would give a tie to the Cybran and the Seraphim, uh, just because they are kind of the yin to each other's yang, so to speak. One has a uh, higher uh, area of effect, one has higher damage per second. They kind of balance each other out and they both have shorter range with the Aeon as a albeit a very distant fourth, to be fair. Um, the Aeon just really suffers from a lot of, I think, deficiencies in its in the overall unit's design. I think that the biggest one, honestly, is something that I didn't talk about in either of the tests. Um, but going back and looking at the footage while I'm wrapping up this script, I've kind of noticed that uh, the Aeon's fire cycle is far lower than the UEF and the Cybern. I think that fire cycle is also what's causing it to be kind of a distant second here where it tends to shoot one shot that is really impactful, whereas the Cybern and the UEF and the Seraphim are able to spread their damage out over uh, much, many more shots. I think that that's, that's helping them out quite a bit. So anyway, Aeon is really just dealt a shorthand here, or shorthand here as far as um, damage per second, radius, um, as well as fire cycle. The only thing that they have an advantage in is range and it's not enough to bring them back. So hope you all enjoyed it. I'll see you in the next one. Give it a like and a subscribe and peace.